why you shouldn't buy the iPad Pro 2021, and the best portable tablet for a digital painting artist looking for that sketchbook in hand feel. What's up guys, Tony here. I am a graphic artist and brand developer. This channel is all about art and design related content, so if that's something that you're interested in, do consider subscribing. Check the links below to make sure that you get the right items mentioned within this video. Be sure to watch to the end of this video to find out how to make your iPad feel even more like a sketchbook. April 20th, the new iPad Pro 2021 was announced, featuring the M1 chip that can be found in the latest Mac computer, making it super powerful despite it not being able to run Mac OS. Similar to the third and fourth generation iPad Pro, you can run Fresco, Procreate, and Photoshop. You can use larger canvases and you can use larger brushes. It's crazy how powerful it is, but it's really in favor of those that are doing 4K video editing, 3D modeling, 3D rendering, and gaming. It has a Liquid Retina XDR, which is optimized for HDR footage. So again, for those photographers, for those filmmakers and editors, those type of actions being taken on this tablet, you really see the power in that. If you're getting value from this video, go ahead and give it a like. The opportunity that this brings is that for those artists that are trying to get the iPad Pro, this is a great opportunity to get the third and fourth generation iPad Pro. The added XDR in this model is really optimized for watching movies. The level of highlights and low darks you only really see in really deep shadows and really high lights. So if you have a lot of motion and changing of scenes and changing of lightings, it really makes sense. But for somebody creating on a canvas, I don't know that you're gonna have that type of dynamic range where you're gonna see a big difference out of it. If you're at the beginning stages of your digital painting and you're trying to get your grayscale process down, check out this video to find out a process that I use that has helped me to get started. Let's take a look at the third and fourth generation iPad Pros. When you look at the 2018 and the 2020 iPad Pros, they are basically specced almost exactly the same. You get a lot of the same performance with a little bit of an upgrade, maybe some more layers in your Procreate files. You have the same freedom to use the second generation Apple Pencil, which I would say is a great reason to upgrade if you have the 2017 model of the iPad Pro. The battery life of the 2018 and 2020 iPad Pro is very similar as well. With my current 2018 iPad Pro, it lasts most of the day. I don't have to really think about charging it unless I just have it open and lit without me using it, just idle, pretty powerful. It has great speakers if I want to have a video up or some instructional how-to video if I'm having a situation with some type of material or like how do I really render this rock. I'm able to do that very freely and the power of the device allows me to do multiple tasks without feeling like I'm missing out. I find the iPad Pro 2018 very capable of handling my specific needs. If I'm doing a sketch or if I'm trying to render out some really dope environment or some dope portrait, which I do a bunch of portraits, it has the power to do that and then some. Ultimately, my working style was completely transformed by the 2018 iPad Pro, and I'll say it stands up, and looking at the specs, it's still very current and super powered. At the time of its release, there were 44.2 million of them sold over portable laptops in the entire market. If you're a traditional artist and you're thinking, hey, I don't need no tablet, I'm good. Just look at how I started out. Colored pencils, markers, the list goes on and on and on. Sketching in your sketchbook over a desk, using a Wacom tablet, using a bigger tablet, the hand-eye coordination was just not really working. Naturally, I progressed to the iPad Pro. I just found it intuitive and very easy to use. Just the fact that it's made the same size as a sketchbook page, 12 by nine, it just made it so much easier. Now the screen is glass, so it is slippery, so I will provide a way to get it to feel like a sketchbook, but consolidating all of the tools that I used to use and carry around everywhere to one 12 by nine tablet with a pencil just made life so much easier. Question of the day, what is your favorite tablet to use for sketching? And if you don't have a tablet, what is your favorite media, digital or traditional? Are you a traditional artist? Are you a digital artist? 
let me know below. And now if you're anything like me, this is the part that you've been waiting for. How do you make your tablet feel like a sketchbook? The answer is paper-like. If you're not familiar with paper-like, it is a textured, matte, sketch-like feeling screen protector. It has a matte finish that covers your tablet from end to end. When I first unboxed my tablet, I found that it was very slippery and very hard for me to get that feeling of sketching like I was looking for. When I got the paper-like screen protector, it really helped so much in translating the traditional artist that I used to be into the digital artist that I am today. I'll leave links below to Paperlike if you're interested in trying one for yourself. The price difference for these devices is pretty considerable, making it even more appealing to get one now from the third and fourth generations. They're coming up at 500 to 600, 700 in some places, touching 800. So it's a great time to grab one if you're interested in getting one for yourself. The newer devices for the 11 inch is ranging from seven to 1800, where the 12 by nine is coming in at a thousand to almost $2,000. So if you want the extra specs, by all means buy the new one. But like I said before, it's a great opportunity to get a device for yourself, be able to add to your arsenal as an artist without having to break the bank at the same time. For artists, unless you're doing super large canvas sizes, I really don't see that great of a benefit of switching over to this latest device. I know it's exciting, Apple's released something new, wow, wow. But for artists, I just don't see the bandwidth in programs like Procreate, Fresco, and Photoshop to validate this change over where you have to buy a new device. It's totally up to you and if you feel that this will meet your needs, by all means do it. But I think the reality is you can get a lot of power and I still get a lot of power out of my 2018 iPad Pro. And I would suggest using the links below to get your own 2018 iPad Pro or the 2020 iPad Pro. The prices will continue to go down as this new device launches. So in May, if you decide to delay your purchase, when it comes out, the newest iPad Pro is released, you can get a good price for the older versions and still have a lot of the same power without, you know, super power to do a lot of editing that you may not even want to do anyway. If you've ever thought about doing merch and you want shirts with catchy phrases and funny sayings on them, check out this video to find out the quality of Teespring and if it's what you would like to get started.